Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Let's go ahead and get started. Let me know if you guys can hear my audio and see my screen in the chat box. Just give me a little why or a yes there just to let me know that it is indeed working. Hope everybody's having a fantastic uh, afternoon so far. Looking forward to our basic trading webinar today. We're going to talk about TradingView. Um, we're going to go through all the buttons of TradingView, show you guys how to use it, how to set up a watch list, how to set up your charts, uh, literally everything that you can think of with TradingView we'll probably do today. So that's kind of the, the idea. Um, and also, I uh, want to give a shout out to those of you watching this on the recording or on YouTube. want to say hello to you guys and welcome you to participate in any way you can. If you're here live, feel free to ask any questions you have in the comment in the chat box function. If you're here watching this in the recording, feel free to ask those questions in the comment section down below. All right, guys, well, let's go ahead and get started. As always, I need to remind you about the risks involved in this market. You can lose all or more than your initial investment if you're not careful. So please be aware of how many pips you're risking on each trade in addition to how big your lot size is and ultimately how that would affect your account if you were to lose money. So make sure that you're going through that process each and every time that you take a trade. All right, guys, so let's dive into trading view. I'm going to pull up a trading view. Let me actually just pull up a new trading view. Let's just go to their website homepage and I'll show you guys how to navigate this because it can be a little bit confusing. So um, first of all, let's talk a little bit about TradingView. So TradingView has been around for a while now. They've um, definitely become extremely popular over the last, I would say like three to four years is when they really became the premier trading platform. And TradingView is used for several purposes. So it is... I would say the number one uh, charting platform on the internet. Um, a lot of different web trader platforms like with Alanda or Forex.com are powered via TradingView. Okay, so it's a very powerful platform. The other thing that makes TradingView special, I think this is one of the reasons why TradingView became such a, um, um, like a powerful platform is because people can contribute to it anywhere in the world. So if you want to add a new indicator or if you want to um, you know, create something with the charts or some kind of um, program or source code that connects to the charts on TradingView, you can do that. Uh, and you can create it from your own and you can market it and sell it to sell it or give it away for free. A lot of people just give away their content for free on TradingView. So it's very valuable that way. So a lot of people are able to kind of come together in a place where everything's uniform. It's all the same. Like if I create a piece of code that can then be used on TradingView, uh, then anyone else can take advantage of it and use it as well, which is really, really cool. Um, I've actually created my own indicators on TradingView, not because I'm really good at coding, but because I'm a trader. And I actually use ChatGBT to code a couple of indicators, which is kind of cool. We may do a webinar on how to do that, which is pretty awesome. So there's several AI out there uh, that have the ability to code on TradingView. And ChatGBT is one of them, which is really, really cool. So when you're on TradingView, this is what their homepage looks like. You can manage your profile and settings up here. Um, you can see what membership level you're on. I'm, I have w one of their yearly memberships and like I pay for it once a year and I think it's like 150 or $160 for the full year. And it gives me several things like I'm able to, um, you know, I don't have any indicators on my charts or I don't, excuse me, I don't have any ads on my charts. I have indicators. I can get up to like three or no, I can get up to like five or six indicators if you want that many on your charts. And I like it because I don't want to get the ads on my charts. It's kind of annoying because um, you can actually use TradingView for free. Um, and for some people, the free version might be all you need. Um, but if you use it actively every day like I do, you may want to consider getting a membership with TradingView. Um, so, okay. So they have a lot of different things you can go into. Mostly today, I want to just dive into the charts themselves. But when you're on their homepage like this, you have their market summary and you can you can navigate between indices. So right here, they have some of the biggest indices like S&P 500, NASDAQ, Dow Jones, and the Nikkei from Japan. You have stocks right here. Some of the biggest stocks. You can see how much they're up or down today. You've also got ETFs. Um, you know, these are some of the biggest ETFs out there. 
you got crypto. So you can see some of the biggest crypto coins. And then here's Forex, futures, bonds, and so on. Okay, so we, we mostly focus on Forex, and it doesn't really matter what we look at, but you can switch between things here. Over here on the right side, I already have a watch list. Yours may or may not look like this. You can, if you click this button right here, it opens up your watch list. It's a very, it's at the very top right of your screen in Trading View, um, and that can open up your watch list. Um, then you have below that your alerts, which you can add alerts if you have any to add. I haven't used my alerts as much here, but if you want to place an alert, you can certainly do that. I'll show you how to do that. You can actually get the TradingView app on your phone and and it'll sync up to the alerts that you put on your desktop, which is really nice. Um, and then you have your hot list right here. So this is just some of the biggest um, uh, stocks and exchanges. Let's see, stocks, exchanges, what else? They have biggest losers, biggest winners, and so on. And I believe you can edit this or you can switch between, yeah, you can switch between different hot lists. Oh yeah, and you can create your own. Yep, you can. So that's kind of cool. Um, you have um, ideas, so you can create your own ideas. You have chats, um, ideas, streams. So people actually post their own trading ideas and you can follow along different people's um, ideas about the markets, which is kind of cool. Kind of helps if, you know, like sometimes I'll go follow different people that I believe that are pretty good at trading and then I'll go to the ideas stream to make sure it aligns with what I'm doing. Or, you know, sometimes I find out that, you know, maybe I'm not, maybe I'm following the wrong, um, you know, maybe I'm following the wrong group or something, or maybe I, maybe I'm not doing the right analysis on my own. And so sometimes it's nice to see that. So there's a lot of things you can actually dive into. You could, there's so many rabbit holes here. You could go down <laughs> actually. So we, we don't want to go down all of them, but um, let's just, let's just pull up a chart. So here's what you do. If you just go to your watch list here um, and, and yours may or may not look like this, I'll show you how to edit it. You can, you, you can click on anything. You know, if you click on any instrument, it'll give you a profile of the instrument. It'll tell you what it is. Okay. It's this, um, it'll give you an overview um, you can see the percent gain over the last day, five days, month, six months, and so on. And you can click on news to see what news are coming up with that particular instrument. This is kind of nice too, actually. See what kind of news is coming out. Um, you can click on ideas. So this, so people actually go out there and post their own trading ideas on these different pairs. So you can. Um, like this was updated on the 26th. Um, let's see, are these, let's see. Um, you can, I guess you can click newest. Yeah. So this one was posted four hours ago, four hours ago. Somebody posted an idea eight hours ago, nine hours ago. So people are posting ideas all the time. And then you can come here and, you know, you can like people's different ideas. Um, you know, it'll tell you like th these two people think it's going to go down this guy thinks it's going to go up. This guy thinks it's going to go down. This guy thinks it's going to go up, 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 up here. Right. And so it's kind of, it's kind of an, and you have, you can get lost in this too. So um, if you ever follow individuals, um, what I s suggest is um, finding the people you like and then just staying focused on them. Because if you try to follow every single person, you know, you don't know how credible their signals are. What you can do I've done this in the past. I, I actually used to post on here, but I could never get a big enough following with it that it wasn't really worth my time. So um, just because this is so saturated, like anybody can post anything. And so it gets super saturated with ideas. So just so you know, you can get lost in here with different ideas. Um, and like some people are looking at different time frames, and other people are looking at the one minute. So somebody may say it's going to go up but they're hoping it goes up in the next hour. And then another person may say it go, it's going to go down, but they're thinking like something over the next like several weeks, right? So anyway, but that's kind of a fun thing, the trade idea concept. I hope they improve that over time because that actually is a pretty cool concept where anybody can just go in here and post their ideas. Then you have technical analysis. And so the tech, though, they actually created these uh, uh, meters, 
that tell you what they believe, what trading view believes the market's going to do based off of technical analysis. You got oscillators, moving averages, and so on in, in the direction. You know, I wouldn't necessarily put a lot of stock into these, um, even though they're kind of cool, just because they already tell you what the market's already done, not necessarily what it's going to do next. Which is, which is, by the way, why we trade with the COT report. We're always trying to find what the market's going to do next. Um, but the, this is still kind of fun, though. And you can change this by, you know, different time frames. You know, you can go down to like a, you know, let's let's switch this down to a five minute chart, and now you can kind of see that oscillator change. It's kind of that's kind of nice. Okay. Um, and then you have just an economic calendar, which I think is basically the news or, or, or I guess this is actually the upcoming news and the news is what's actually happened or what's come out with that pair. And then you have what's up here, this button on, it says see on super charts. This is where I click most of the time because this will take me to the chart that you guys normally see me trade on. So this is a trading view chart and there are so many things you guys can do here. Like you can... Oh my gosh, there's so many tools and you can get overwhelmed pretty quickly with how much, how many tools you have. Um, but I'll give you kind of a basic rundown. And then what we'll do is um, we'll, uh, I'll give you a basic rundown and then we'll kind of go into some more detail. But the first thing you should see when you pull up a super chart like this on TradingView is the chart itself. Okay. That's going to occupy most of the that's going to occupy most of your screen right here. And this may be white or black. It may be a totally different color altogether, but this is generally what it's going to look like. Okay. And then up here at the top, um, surrounding the chart itself, these are mostly things that have to do with interacting with the chart. So the first thing you have is the symbol. So you can change what currency pair you're looking at right here. This next one, you can you can actually add an overlay. So like, for example, if you wanted to see, um, like I just added the S&P 500 overlay. I think that's what this is. <laughs> so like at this, the yeah, so basically this is just showing you what the gain of the S&P 500 is during the same period of the Aussie CAD. I think that's what that's saying. Um, I'm not going to use that. I don't know why you would do that, but... Sometimes overlays are nice if you're comparing similar assets like gold and silver, or if you're comparing like an index fund like NASDAQ versus US 30, you know, those are kind of fun to track and see the difference between the two. All right. And then you've got the next one, which is your time frame. This is going to be pretty much something you'll change probably daily um, as you do your analysis. I usually default it to the hourly time frame, but you can certainly switch between you know, hourly to a 15 minute or hourly to a daily or so on. Easy to do right there. Then you can change your candles. Like right now I have candlesticks. I love candles, but you can change this to a bar chart. If you like the bar charts more than candles. I don't know why you would like bars, but no offense to people that like bars, but I think candles are a superior form of analysis. Um, and then you have things like the line chart. Line charts have actually become a little bit more popular recently. Hey traders, it's Steve from the future. I hope you have enjoyed this video so far. If you are getting value out of this video, be sure to hit the like button, click the subscribe button, and share your trading thoughts. I read all the comments, so feel free to ask any questions you have there too. On a side note, I host live trading calls like this one you are watching every day. Some of my biggest trading secrets I share exclusively to just the members in my program. I host these live trading calls every day, Monday through Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern. I also host a basic training webinar every Monday for the newer traders and the regular COT report and sentiment trading webinars every Wednesday night at 8 and 9 p.m. Eastern for the advanced and aspiring traders. All of these calls are recorded and promptly posted on the members trading calendars at the conclusion of each call in case your schedule does not permit you to come to the live call. All of my members have complete access to the scanner. We call it Steve Scanner. This is an institutional grade trade alert scanner that picks the direction of the week on all 28 major currency pairs and includes trading instruments like gold, silver, NAS 100, US 30, 
Just in the last 90 days, I have made over 3,000 pips just taking the top trade signals from the scanner at the beginning of the week and then just holding those trade alerts until Friday. If you want access to the scanner, you can start a 14-day free trial with the join link in the description to get started. Lastly, if you really want to be a full-fledged VIP member of my program to get access to things like the basic training course, live signals channel, Steve's scanner, trading calendars, and the one-on-one -on -one calls with me throughout the month, you can use code YouTube50, that's YouTube50, no spaces at checkout, and save $50 on your first month. Again, just click the link in the description below and apply that coupon to become a VIP member, and I look forward to helping you with your inevitable trading success going forward. Now, back to the video. They don't tell you as much information, but sometimes for other people, this is more of a clear way of looking at the market than looking at an actual candle. So, you know, it's up to you. You know, you can change that from a candle to a line chart. You can change this to like some of the more older candlestick charts like Renko and Heikinashi, right? Here's a Renko chart right here. And... um I'm not a big fan of Renko charts, but um, I actually had a strategy like 10 years ago where I would use the Renko, uh, Renko charts um, pretty exclusively, actually. Um, and uh, the, I mean, basically what I used to do, and you can do this, is the whole idea with Renko is to eliminate the noise. So you'll notice here, like with this move to the upside, there's like, 15 candles, 20 candles up. You can see that, you know, they're consistent. The idea with Renko is just to remove all the bearish candlesticks along the way. That way you don't get caught following the wrong direction. Okay. So that's the whole point with Renko, but then it'll switch the other way. And then, and it's just basically a trend tracker. You're trying to follow the trend with Renko charts. So, I mean, it is a useful thing if you're, if you're pretty much a trend trader um, and it kind of eliminates noise, but as far as figuring out liquidity zones and then technical analysis, uh, the the um, Renko charts are not going to be useful at all. So, <clears throat> but uh, so that's why I use cam candles to me, uh, and that's why you'll see a lot of people use candles is because the candle charts are they, they definitely tell you the most information because a candlestick is jam packed with a story. Every candle tells a story, right? Um, and, and then you just don't get that with some of the other ones, but those are useful. So you can switch around if you ever want to play with it. Um, and then the next thing you have indicators. Now, this is probably one of the biggest highlights of trading view. So in trading view, you have their indicator, um, search bar here. And I found this by the way, I just went up to the top here and I just clicked on indicators because these guys, this is actually kind of what put trading view on the planet or on the map, not on the planet, on the map. These guys got famous for this because they basically open source their platform to developers. So anybody could come here and create their own indicators. Like I said, I've even made my own indicators on TradingView. You can have ChatGBT write you an indicator in about 30 seconds, and then you can just insert it into TradingView. Like I said, we might actually do a webinar where we show you guys how to do that. It's kind of a fun process to make an indicator. It's kind of crazy. You'd think, you'd think only programmers can do that, but now just anybody has the capacity to do that with TradingView. So in here, you can search anything you want. You know, if you want to search um, just your traditional indicators from like many decades ago, like RSI, you can search RSI. But you're not just going to get RSI, like you have the, the basic ones from trading view here, but you also have all of the other ones. Like these are different developers, right? And you can see how many people are using them. Like this guy made this one called RSI candles. His name's Glaz and he's a 14,000 people using his indicator, right? This one says RSI divergence. Um, oh, I'd actually be interested in that one. See, this is, this is kind of fun. You start to find things as you search along, you start to find things that you're like, Oh, Maybe I could use that. In fact, I'm going to click on that guy's real quick. That guy's got um, 11,000 people currently using his indicator, which is kind of cool. I'll have to figure out um, how he uses this, but um, this is this is pretty fun. 
Um, so you can just kind of look through and see what people are doing. I am curious to see how this guy, um, I'd have probably need to watch a video. That's one complaint I have with that is just using with other people, using other people's indicators is you may not know how to use it, but that's okay because you might find your own way of using it. Um, okay. So, so like I said, there's so many different things you could, and then if you search like order blocks, right, because that's something that we do in the program, look how many order block indicators there are. <laughs> it just goes on and on and on and on. Um, I like the the ones that we use. I already have them loaded up. Um, the ones I use are the Smart Money by Lux Algo. I also use their order block detector. Lux Algo also created this. And then I also like the Sonar Lab order block. It's just Sonar Lab dash OB. Um, those are the ones that I like to use. So you'll often see me use those in the classes. I've used these for years now. Um, I think I've used all three of those indicators at least since 2022 is when I started using those three indicators. So, and I'm open to different ones. If there are better ones, I'm sure there are, but uh, the ones I've been using have been just great. So I, I continue to use them. All right. So you have this and then you can just search, like if you click technicals, these are just your basic indicators. If you want to use the basic ones, there's so many. Oh my gosh, you could get lost in here. And then there's um, community. Okay, so here's top. Oh, interesting. Okay, I didn't know. I this is I'm just discovering stuff as I'm going through with you guys. So this looks like this is the top indicator that people are using. It's called the squeeze momentum indicator by uh, Lazy Bear. Almost eighty eight thousand people have liked it. Um, I'm gonna click on that. I'm going to have to watch, I guarantee there's a video on YouTube about this. So I'm going to have to watch a video on this indicator, but um, interesting. I'll have to figure out why is this indicator used by so many people because obviously doing a good thing. So this is kind of cool. So you can see what's trending. Um, okay. Here's money flow profile. Anything Lux Algo puts out, pretty much people hop on pretty quickly because Lux Algo is and they're great. They spent uh, their story is actually pretty cool. Uh, they spent years um, just developing uh, free resources for people. They just they just put stuff out there for free, just trying to help people, and they just got famous for that. Like it was really cool. They weren't even making a profit. They were just on a mission to help people, and and these guys is really cool. They're they're you could look up their story. It's pretty cool. But um yeah, this I'm not not surprised to see that when you look at trending. Um, a lot of their, they're coming out with new indicators all the time. And like, I click on this one called money, money flow. I'm not sure what this does, but I'd be curious to find out how this works. This money flow indicator. Um, I'm sure there's a video. They, they make a video for every indicator they drop. So if you ever were curious or if you like Lux, I'll go, which I do. Um, you can look up their different indicators, but like I said, you can, get lost pretty quickly you know you know that's the thing you, you could get lost and take um this market is so profound like the things you could do are, are it's so big and, and so i just try to focus in on the like i respect that there's so many good things out there and i love it but i try to focus in on what's working for me and a lot of indicators i have found at least for and this is my personal experience a lot of indicators uh, tend to give me information uh, slowly. Like it doesn't actually tell me what's happening in advance. That's why I like the COT report. Although it tells me what the banks have already done, if I can find a market that's undervalued, right? If I can find, you know, like uh, like what we're finding with US 30, like US 30 looking like it's probably going to be going up here soon. It's already going up. Um, and that's a, that's a, that is a, from the scanner, we can see that the banks have been buying big time on US 30 over the last many weeks, and yet the market's down right now. So, so there, there, there are times coming like that. That currency pair is coming because we can see that the market's down. But meanwhile, the banks have been buying. That's what I love. I love trying to find those types of uh, what we call divergences in price versus what the banks are doing. And see, that's been my happy place. That's where I've been able to make my money and I've been happy to teach it because it, it works very well and I and I like it. And and obviously we've built that into the scanner. So very happy to share that with people.
Um, just like I'm sure a lot of these people have found success with what they do and they're happy to share it. But like I said, most stuff is junk out there. And so you have to be very careful to not get too uh, antsy about jumping into some of these other indicators or because like I said, there's that, I mean, there, um, let's put it this way. There are more indicators put into trading view every day than you'd have time to look at. Right. It's the same thing with like, um, um, oh, actually, let me share another interesting fact that I learned the other day. Ever since the advent of AI, artificial intelligence, um, there have been more articles written over the last three years than ever in human history. So think about that. Think about that. The last three years, there's been more, more writings. Uh, more writings have been put together. Like there's everything you could possibly read. Okay, think about all the books out there in the world that that have ever been written, all the articles that have ever been written that you could possibly read. Half of them have been created in the last three years, <laughs> right? And that's the same thing that happens with TradingView and some of these other places that have these open source platforms is people can just hop in here and start creating indicators. And so you have to kind of really... Um, like filter through what what you're willing to do and what you're not willing to do, right? And so, um, so that's why for me, I just focus on what we're doing, and then I I use, you know, if if somebody comes along with a really good indicator, I'll, I'll take somebody's recommendation. But I've kind of learned not to just jump into like just anything that's out there because um, if you if you just try to find it yourself, sometimes that's that that could be a time waster right? Time is money. All right, guys. So we've talked about the indicators. That's a pretty, I wanted to talk a little bit about it because it is really a special component of trading view not to be overlooked. Okay. And then you've got up here, the alerts, you, oh, the replay. I got to talk about the replay. So if you ever wanted to do like back testing, I do this late at night. Sometimes if I'm back testing a strategy. Here's what I'll do on trading view. I'll go back in time. Let's say, you know, let's, uh, um, let's say we want to go back I don't know, like say to here, I don't know, anywhere. Okay. And let's say you want to back to the strategy. If you click on the replay button up here and then cl click into the chart, it will now show you the market, a progressive, like you can actually progress with the market and you have this little replay button down here. And now you can watch the candle start to appear. So you could ask yourself, would a buy right here make sense or a sell right here make sense? So you can actually pull up different indicators. You can pull up different, um, you know, the, you know, whatever it is. Sometimes I do this with the cot report. I'll go see what the cot report said from three months ago. And then I'll do a replay of three months ago. And I'll ask myself, okay, based off this cot data, I would have bought or sold right here. And then you go ahead and um, do a replay. So, then you can say, okay, if I, I was going to sell right here, I was going to buy and okay, it looks like it won. Or actually this trade would have lost, right? So you can kind of do a lot of research beforehand, which is pretty cool. So that's what the replay is. And you can you can go back, you can actually, or you can forward, let's see, this will take you to the current market. Yep, right here. And then you can turn off replay, yep, by just clicking it, clicking on it up there and click yes. Okay. So that's a replay indicator and that's all, all of this is up here. Okay. Now let me direct your attention to the left side. So all of this is your, these are your chart tools. Okay. So right here you have just your cross here. You can change this to cross dot arrow eraser magic. Um, yeah, whatever you want it to be. Um, the next one down is your, um, and by the way, there's a little bit of a, it's not just one button. You can actually extend this out and see all the different things they have. So these are trend lines. So I use trend lines in the class a lot. You guys have seen me use these, you know. So um, I actually use an arrow instead. Um, I I use this right here, and I made this because I have this little quick quick bar up here. And how do you create a quick bar like this? So a lot of people see me do this because I just use these in the classes when I'm demonstrating. And the way I put this together is you can see I've put a star next to the ones that I want. So let's say I wanted to add this like ray right here. I like this ray. If I add a star, you can see it just added to my quick bar up here. I'm not sure what this call called. I'm just going to call it the quick bar. And then if I turn this off, 
um, it'll go away from my favorites. Maybe it's just called the favorite bar. And, um, and then if I don't want the horizontal line anymore, I can delete it. Um, oops. I can click on that and I can, I can hit the star and it'll go away, but I do want it. So I'm going to put it back. Okay. And so now I've got this quick bar that I can use and I can draw, you know, different things. You guys are familiar with these. When you see me present, I use these types of things all the time. I got the text box. I've got circles. I've got these rectangles that I can use right to demonstrate. Those are pretty nice. By the way, what am I just do control Z in my, this is a quick little command in, in trading view. If you just do control Z, um, it'll, it'll remove the last thing you put on. So if you, if you put on too many things, like which I have a habit of doing, if you put too much stuff on your chart, you can just control Z and then that will get rid of stuff. The other way you can get rid of stuff is you can hear, let me put some stuff back on again. Um, the other way you can get rid of stuff is you, you just right click on the chart and then you can hit remove drawings. And if you hit remove drawings, that will remove all drawings. Okay. You can remove individual drawings by either clicking on the drawing itself. So like if you want to get rid of this circle, I can click on it and then I can click delete. Or another way to get rid of individual things is to right click and then hit object tree. And that's going to pull this up over here and you can see all the different things you have in your chart. Um, so this is just the candlesticks. These are the different indicators that I have. And then here's that circle. If I want to remove this circle, I'm just going to hit delete and now it's gone. Pretty cool, right? All right. And then... Um, and then uh, you guys have also seen me use this. This is nice for drawing out, out like different trades that you're possibly going to take. You guys saw I just posted this on US30. Um, a new trade. I just posted a new trade on US30 about like what, an hour ago, two hours ago. It's a buy stop order. So we're waiting to get triggered into this US30 trade. Um, this may happen tonight or tomorrow, I'm, I'm thinking. So... I put a buy stop right here. I'm hoping for a break to the upside. If we break to the upside, we'll definitely see what happens. Um, and so people ask me, how do you draw that out? Like, how do you draw specific trades like that? That's pretty cool. Well, they have this, uh, um, I put it in my favorites here, as you guys can see, but they have this right here. Um, it's called long position and short position. That's all it is. It's just a projection and it's super nice. Um, I obviously love it for picking trade opportunities. Super nice. Okay. And then um, they have these other patterns that you can do. You can use Elliott Waves. If you're into Elliott Waves, um, you've got Fibonacci's, so many different Fibonacci's. You got, um, like, not only do you have retracement and expansion Fibonacci's, which are pretty common, but you also have, like, time Fibonacci's, uh, which... There's a time Fibonacci here. Uh, where is it? I'm skipping it. Where is it? Uh, oh, yeah, Fibonacci time zone. So what you can do with Fibonacci time zone, this is kind of cool, actually. You can actually just put this on from one pivot to another pivot. And this will usually, um, the Fibonacci time zone will actually usually put pivots around. Like, obviously, here's these two, the ones we put out. And then um, you can see the, that's a pivot right there. That's a pivot right there. It pivoted right there. Yeah, it is kind of, <laughs> it's kind of cool actually. Uh, Fibonacci time zones. We did a, we did a webinar. We have a webinar on this actually. It's in the basic training library. It's called Fibonacci's uh, or something like that. If it's, I think it's, it's just Fibonacci or something like that. It's towards the bottom of the basic training library. So we did a webinar on Fibonacci time zones. Pretty cool. If you guys want to go back and watch it. Okay. So, wow, we got, oh my gosh, this thing is crazy. There's so many things you can do. Okay. And then you've got your um, text and notes. Like if you ever want to like uh, draw things for yourself to take pictures, to do your own analysis, to put in your journals, this is really nice. Um, you also got, you can put reactions and emojis like, uh, Let's see. We hope this comes up in triggers so we can maybe uh, put our greed. <laughs> we put a little emoji right here. That's pretty fun. If it goes up to there. We're going to be really happy. Maybe I'll maybe I'll leave him there. That, that's kind of fun. Okay. And then you got the, oh, the measuring tool. So a lot of people have asked me about this. This is a really useful tool right here. This is right here. 
um, people ask like, how, how do you draw, how do you know how many pips you're going for or going to make on a trade? So like right with this trade, I can actually click on the measuring tool. And then if I click down and just click once and then draw up, you can see how many pips we're going for. We're looking for like, well, this is on US 30, so it's different, but it's a 2.31% gain, which is 887 pips on US 30. Okay, so you can see me move that around. And it'll even show you how many bars or how much time it would take. You know, like if I draw to here, that's 10 days. Or if I draw to here, it's six days, four days, and so on. Pretty cool. You can zoom in if you want to. Like I can just zoom in like that on the chart, which. So if I just want to zoom into like this area, now we're just looking at that. Yeah, that's kind of cool, actually. Nice. Yeah, I've not, I've actually not used that before. So this is, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. I, you have to click and draw and hold. So if I go like this, I just want to look at that. There we go. Now I'm just looking at that. Nice. Okay, cool. And there's some other things that you can do down here. You can lock your chart. Um, you can stay in drawing mode. You can turn off drawing mode. Lock all drawings. Hide all drawings, um, remove objects. I guess that's another way to just get rid of everything right there. Okay, so that's kind of your right or left side of the of trading view right there. It's your tools that you'll be using for your chart. Then if you um, but and oh, I forgot to mention up here on the top, you can you can go full screen mode like this, and then to get out of full screen mode, I just press escape on my on my uh, keyboard. And then, uh, oh yeah, and you can publish. So you can share your trade idea with the community. So if you just click publish and, you know, it shares to a community and so on. Um, and then you can click on your watch list again right here. So if you don't want a f the full screen, you can just click here and then that pulls up your watch list. But let's say you want to navigate between, this is the US 30. Let's say you want to go take a look at, I don't know, like the Aussie CAD. Okay, here's the Aussie CAD and you just click on it and pulls it up and you can just click... This is nice because in MT4 you have to drag and drop. With this, you just click and um, you just click on it. Um, yeah, with this one, you just click on it and it pulls right up, which is super awesome. Okay, um, so let me while I'm on the while I'm on watch list, let me show you guys how to make a watch list on TradingView. So. Up here in Trading View, if you again, this is where you get the watch list. You just click in and out right here. Up here at the top of the header of the watch list, you can change between watch lists. So you can create your own. I've made one for stocks. I have one for Forex. I have one for crypto. I have this one for the Asian kill zone, which is a strategy I use during the Asian session. And then if I click crypto, you can see these are the cryptos that I'm watching right now. So I've got Render, Shiba, Solana. Um, I've got... Cardano, Bitcoin, Dogecoin, Polkadot, you know, Ethereum, just a lot of basic stuff. And uh, I may add a few more things into that watch list. But so I can, you can see how I can switch between watch lists. So say, say I want to go back to Forex and I just go back to Forex. And you can make one that's all inclusive, but I like to keep them separate. So when I'm, when I teach in the classes, I mostly just trade Forex. Our scanners built for Forex and a few futures like gold, silver, oil, US 30, NAS 100. This is pretty much what I use for the classes. So I have this one and I almost exclusively use that. But sometimes I'll switch to the crypto one or sometimes I'll switch to the, the stocks one. Um, and that's nice because you can just, now I can look up stocks or I can look up, you know, whatever I want to look at with stocks. So that's kind of nice. Um, all right, so that's how you switch. So how do you add a watch list? So um, you actually go here. And let's see, let's see, I'm making sure I know. Or is it here? Oh, yes, you actually have to click on this. You have to click on this up here in the top left, and then you click click create new list. And then and then you can go ahead and create the list from there. Um, the other thing you can do is you can, let's see here. So let me, let me um, okay, so right here you have this add symbol. Add symbol is how you get new stuff onto your watch list. So we pretty much have everything we want on Forex. 
So let me actually switch back to my crypto one because let's add, let's add some stuff I've been wanting to add to the crypto one. So I'm going to add symbol. And one of the cryptocurrencies that I've been watching right now is a, is a crypto called uh, Celestia. Um, and so I'm going to search Celestia. Let's see if this is on here. Uh, yes, it is. So here's the, and you and here's how you can kind of, there's actually several different options I have. So you can see this is Celestia versus US dollar that, you know, that's how Forex is traded, or that's how crypto and Forex is traded. It's basically the underlying asset against another underlying asset. So this would be, you know, Celestia versus US dollar. And then the next thing you have is who do you want to have supply your data? Because TradingView gets this data from different suppliers. So this one would be with Coinbase. This one would be with um, OKX. This is with Qcoin. This is with HKEX and so on. There's with the NASDAQ. Um, and so you can select who you want to supply it. Usually if I'm looking at um, like cryptos, I'm going to just use Coinbase or something like that. So I'm going to add TIA USD, which is Celestia. I'm going to add that there. And then I can click on that and I can see how Celestia is doing. Obviously Celestia down uh, this way. A lot of, a lot of crypto is down right now, which is to be expected. I've been talking about this for a while. Usually cryptos go down for the first three or four weeks right after the halving event. So we just had the Bitcoin halving about a week or two ago and cryptos usually take a big collapse right after, uh, I wouldn't say it's a collapse. It's a pretty good a correction though. And that's what we're going through right now with crypto. I know this is a different topic. I just wanted to share it because you'll see all these cryptos. Every single one of them is down today and significantly too. And, and it's just pretty common right after the halving, you're going to see collapse, but I'm not fooled by it because I'm, I'm in it for the long run. I've got this, uh, I'm building my crypto position, which I'll be selling next year at the end of the cycle. So between June and December of 2025 is when I plan to start selling my crypto. But in the meantime, this is all buying time. So it's accumulation time. Um, I've done videos on this. I actually have a pretty good video. If you guys are curious to see my, um, if you guys are curious to see uh, my crypto predictions for next year, I've um, obviously it's not our big focus, but it is something we do on the side. If you guys are interested, this is actually uh, Bitcoin and crypto. So Ethereum is a uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum is actually how I bought my house. Uh, the house I'm sitting in right now is is actually I used uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum as a vehicle in 2019. I bought in um, like six seven thousand dollars. I was still a college student at the time. I put it in. I did my study. I did my homework. I put it in in 2021. I sold it for about eighty thousand, and um, so yeah, I turned six thousand into eighty thousand. Um, in two years. And then that's how I was able to buy my house. Um, and I'm doing the same thing again, but I'm doing it about a hundred times bigger this time. <laughs> so uh, it's going to be, it's going to be a wild ride for sure. So anyway, I'll, if you guys are interested, I'd be more than happy to sharing uh, what, what, what my game plan is and how I plan to take advantage of it. Um, let's see. Danny says, how do you get that risk to reward box? Oh yeah, it's super simple. So it's, it's over here on the left side um, this is back to the charting tools. So all charting tools on TradingView are on the left side. And this may take a little bit of time to get used to, but as you kind of click through here, you'll find the things that you like. And then if you hit the star button, that will um, highlight them. The The risk to reward box is right here um, next to projections. And you just, it, it just, you can click on it or you can star it like I have. And if I just click right here, here's a long position. So you can create, you know, your RR ratio. You know, if you were to take a trade, what would that look like? Um, and so on. So this this is really, really nice, obviously, for obvious reasons. And then, um, you know, say you wanted to go short, you could put this on. You know, I, I've just got it favorited. So it's really nice. Okay, let's say I wanted to add another crypto. Like, again, let's say, let's say, um, another one that I'm doing is fetch, uh, fetch AI. It's an AI crypto, um, which I think is just F if I actually just search fetch. Yeah, here it is. So it's F F E T F E T, uh, USD. This is another crypto and I'm just get, you can use the Binance. Binance is a great company. I believe I haven't used them, but I think they're great. 
I, I've been doing Coinbase and Robinhood for most of my crypto purchases. And then um, if, yeah, if I just want to use the uh, Coinbase, I just click on it right here and then boom. So now it's on my watch list. And here's Fetch AI, uh, which is currently at $2.10 um, right now. So this, like I said, this is an artificial intelligence cryptocurrency. Um, it's a it's an AI project that's gained a lot of popularity anyway. So I, I, that's another video. I could do that in a different thing. But now I've got this added to my watch list, which is really nice. Okay. And then you can take away from your watch list easily. Like if you don't want this anymore, let's say you don't want to look at this anymore. You can just uh, hover over it and then just to the right, you can click X and that will remove it. All right. You can make your watch list bigger by just dragging this panel out like this if you want to make it bigger. Easily. Easily done. There's also a profile down here, by the way, this, uh, this profile down here that you can click on that shows you information about the underlying asset, shows you what the volume is, um, what the market cap is. So the market cap of Fetch AI is $1.79 billion. And then uh, here's information about the different, you know, about the, uh, the um, asset and so on. So it's kind of cool. Very nice stuff. Okay, so if I want to switch back to Forex, let's do that. I switch back to my Forex and then now I'm back. And I can switch between different pairs over here, which is awesome. Okay, so now, now that I've kind of explained the watch list, I've shown you how to navigate uh, between different, uh, like I've shown you how to navigate between the the different, um, uh, like the tools and so on. Now I want to show you guys how to, um, what I want to do now is show you how to how to work the charts. Okay, so in the chart itself, you can go full screen here if you want. Um, you can change a lot of things on your chart. So a lot of times, um, how you view the chart depends on your position. So like I like to drag the chart. If I just click and drag, I can move this around. Okay, um, very nice to just kind of position it the way you like it. And then over here on the right side, you have the y-axis and you can move this up and down. This is the price. You can shrink it. You can increase it by moving this up and down. Over here down uh, at the bottom, you can move your... See, this is the x-axis. You can change this. You can shrink this up or make it bigger. So if you can't really see the candles, you can move this and make this bigger. And then you can make this bigger. And now we're, make, we're making this... Uh, we're amplifying what we're looking at. Okay. Now let's say you wanted to change the colors. Let's say you want a different color scheme. Some people don't like these uh, white charts. I, I enjoy these white charts. Um, I've been told I've, my feedback so far is that it's easier to read for most people if you can see a white chart. But some people like the black charts. I used to like the black charts for, for years. I used a black chart. And let's say you wanted to change it. So right here in the settings, how did I find this, by the way? If you right-click and click settings, it takes you here. And this is where you can change the settings of your chart. Let's say you want a black background. Um, you can change this and change both of these to black. And all of a sudden, we have a black background instead. Okay? And that's easy. And if you ever want to go back, I can actually just click Control-Z, and I'm back again. Or I can just... I can just go back like that. Okay, now let's say you want to change the colors of the candlesticks. Let's say you don't like the green and the red, which I like the green and the red, but let's say, you know, something I do is, um, like during Halloween, I'll change my candles for the month of October um, to like black and orange candles. <laughs> so like I'll change it based off of the holiday. It's just kind of fun to change it from, you know, if you want to do that. All right, and then uh, then uh, yeah, let's let's go ahead and do that. So if you want to change this, um, you can go back to Canvas, and then where? Oh yeah, trading. Okay, where are the candles? Okay, I think it's up here with symbol. Yes, I think you change this up here, so I can change this to, um. Yeah, like the green candles. Let's change those to like 
I don't know. Let's do a pink color. There we go. That's the body of the candle. Um, and let's change the borders to pink as well. <laughs> and let's make the wicks pink as well. There you go. So now we got pink candles. <laughs> So you can really mess up your chart. You can change it quite a bit. Now let's let's change the red candles to uh, like blue or something. There we go. Let's go blue. There we go. Go oh, blue. There we go. So now now we've totally changed our our. Uh, now it looks like a, a children's. <laughs> And then you can change that up. Anyway, if you want to go back, again, you can just go back. I think you can just, um, let's see, can we just, yep. So I'm just doing Control-Z, and now I'm back to where I was. I just kept clicking Control-Z until I got the outcome that I wanted. And now I'm back to my my normal setup. So this is pretty, again, pretty nice. Okay. Um, what else, guys? What else do I wanted to show you? I think that's a lot of the really basic things that I wanted to to share. Do you guys have any other specific questions? Um, we've got some minutes still. We, we can wrap up here or we can go a little bit longer. We still have some time. But th this is like the essence of trading view. Now, let me show you. Oh, okay. A lot of people are going to want to know this. I just realized. So anyway, you guys think of more questions while I share this with you. Trading view allows you to connect your trading account. So like you can connect down here, if I scroll, if I drag this panel up down here, so watch me do this. If I drag this up, you can connect to these different brokers. So if you have a broker account with any of these companies, so you have a paper trading account with TradingView, Forex.com, Webull, Awanda, AMP, Tradeavate, TradeStation, IB with Interactive Brokers, Iron Beam. I mean, gosh, there's so many different places. Like you can actually log into your. This is secure too, by the way. They, they, it's all secure. How they do this? You can log into your. Let's say you have an Awanda account, like I do. You can click here and log in to your or Awanda login, and then you can select which trading account you want to connect, whether that's a demo account or a live account. You can just connect it and you agree to the terms and conditions and then you can actually start trading directly on TradingView. So not only, you don't have to use this just for analysis, but you could use this for your actual trading itself, which is super awesome. And this is where you do it, down here in the trading panel. And then you can move this out. Once you're connected, you can move this out of the way. And then you can just focus back up here once you're connected. Um, you also have a thing called Strategy Tester, which I've never used. I'll have to figure out how to use that, but it looks like a really cool feature. Then you have this thing called Pine Editor. Pine Editor is where you can put in code. And if you are if you like to code or if you know how to do things, which I've you can see I've actually done some things in the past down here. I've had ChatGPT write a few things for me that I've put in this Pine Editor, um, and you can create indicators and so on. And then you have this stock screener, which is awesome. You can screen different stocks for what you're looking for for the day. Just incredible. Like these guys, seriously, amazing, amazing job. They know they've done a great job, but like TradingView has uh, hit it out of the park. Uh, absolutely, by far the best trading platform on the internet. There's nothing better than this. This is the standard. No one's even close in second place from what I can tell. So that's why we use it. That's why TradingView is awesome. Um, yeah, and if, you, and if you can connect your account to it even better, I'd say you can keep everything all in one place. Okay, any other questions, guys, about TradingView? I think, I'm, I think that's Pretty much it. That's all I really wanted to share. I think I've covered like everything that they do in general and some things in deep detail. So I think we're going to go ahead and wrap up. So just wanted to share that with you guys. Hope this was helpful to you. Um, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you for coming and we'll see you guys in the next webinar.